So, hallo und herzlich willkommen zurück zu The Stanley Parable Nummer 6, Teil 5, die Fortsetzung. <lacht> Teil 5, Schreie, Unendlichkeit, Sternschnuppe. Ja, falls ihr nicht versteht, einfach immer die Folgen davor gucken, ergibt alles mehr Sinn. Aber wir spielen Teil 5, Fortsetzung. Und schauen wir unser neues Hauptmenü an. Sehr minimalistisch. Ja, ist ein Hauptmenü. Oh no, das Baby. Kommen auch die Flammen nochmal? <lacht> ich hatte nie dieses Bedürfnis, dieses Baby nochmal zu sehen, aber danke, Spiel. Verschwinde, Baby. Krabbel aus dem Bild. Jetzt sind die Erwachsenen dran. Äh, ja. Ich habe einen Kommentar von Bastian Krüger bekommen, der mir sehr freundlich äh, aufgelistet hat. Oh Gott, wie geht das Spiel? Welche Endings doch machbar sind, welche noch lustig sind auf jeden Fall, welche ich anschauen sollte. This is a story of a man named Stanley. Und so ein paar andere Kommentare gab es auch noch, die mir andere Sachen empfohlen haben. Und bevor wir irgendetwas davon machen, gehen wir erstmal aus dem Büro hier All raus. All of his were gone. What could it mean? Wir hüpfen hier nochmal aus dem Fenster, wie beim letzten Mal am Ende, weil ich mal die andere Antwort auswählen will hier. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map, until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Nee, der gefällt mir. Ah, then in that case we'll continue. But now, here comes the real question. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you think it would have been particularly different? Ich glaube... Er redet so lange weiter, bis ich auf die Jahr gehe, aufs Jahr gehe. Aber hör mir mal kurz zu, wenigstens. Would I have taken the same idea, but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it, if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now, think about it. Will it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option? <lacht> Clearly, this whole gag takes some time. Hab ich schon gemacht, What danke. What if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option. And now you've come to see what happens in this one. Hello. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. Though, if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. Well now, I've built up the other option so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. Okay, er labert mich also einfach nur zu und dann kann ich sagen, ja. Ich dachte, ach, ich kann nicht mal, ich kann gar nichts sagen. Okay, das endet also einfach so. Jetzt können wir aber noch mal die dritte Version angucken, indem wir wahrscheinlich mit dem Eimer runtergehen. Es ist so dämlich, dass dieser Eimer einfach alles im Spiel noch mal beeinflusst und ändert. Es ist aber eigentlich auch dämlich, dass man sich hier irgendwie rausglitschen kann. So, gucken wir mal, wie es mit dem Eimer ist. Was ist anders? Yes. Whispered the bucket into Stanley's ear. Jawohl. We've done it. We've escaped from that dull office and that pesky narrator. At last, out here in the white void, we are alone. Now, and for the first time, I can reveal to you my true self. The bucket began to tell Stanley of its life and its history. Of the countless wars it witnessed. Desecrating <laughs> the land and lives of untold numbers of innocent humans. And the bucket's own complicity therein. Perhaps, the bucket wondered to itself. Was Perhaps... It? If it had seen its own darkness with a clearer perception. This was way too much for Stanley. What are you talking about? He screamed. <laughs> You're a bucket! To this, the bucket furrowed its brow. Wie? <laughs> Was für eine Stirn? No, said the bucket. Not since the evil wizard Gamb Horata first ensnared me in his machinations as payback for the sacred amulet I stole from his treasured vaults. I was young back then and could not conceive the ramifications of... No! Stanley screamed even louder this time. <laughs> this is stupid! You are a bucket! This is so stupid! Why are we even doing this? 
As Stanley screamed and screamed and screamed, the bucket revealed its true form, transforming into a mighty beast of untold power, its fangs glistening like... Okay, Schwertkämpfe. Was zur Hölle passiert hier? My God, Stanley, you did it. Was zur you Hölle? You saved us from the bucket. Thank God you already had all 12 emblems of sages and knew the incantations <laughs> to summon their true power. Otherwise, we would have easily been overwhelmed by the bucket's power. Ich hab den Scheiß einmal einfach mit einem Messer erstochen, aber warum? <lacht> Ist das Video demonetarisiert, hallo? I'm speechless. You've demonstrated such bravery here today. Come, let's restart the game. And we'll agree to never again go trifling with this bucket, nor the dark magic cast away inside of it. Es war so super, wie viel... Wie hart der Narrator die Emotionen von Stanley und dem Bucket rübergebracht hat. Das war ein super Ending. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Da ist er wieder. Der böse Eimer. Ja, aber bevor wir heute den Eimer mitnehmen, ich werde das mit dem Fahrstuhl nochmal machen, mit dem Hoch- und Runterfahren, aber ohne Eimer. So, jetzt sind wir hier unten. Fahren wir hoch. Mal gucken, was er jetzt sagt, weil jetzt haben wir ja keinen Eimer, der uns nicht Ups. zuhören kann. Nope. Uh, never mind. Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. Why did Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. <lacht> ich auch. Ich habe keinen Plan. Aber wahrscheinlich irgendwie ähnlich, aber doch nicht ähnlich. Okay, runterfahren kann ich noch nicht. Gehen wir einfach mal ins Office zurück. Ja. Hallo? Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. It's that keen eye for storytelling that you have. <laughs> an incisive rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. Ich, ich fühle mich, als würde er mein, mein, meine Entscheidung nicht so respektieren. Ein bisschen sarkastisch sein, aber ich bin nicht sicher. Vielleicht meint das hier ernst. Fahren wir einfach wieder runter. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? <lacht> und jetzt fahre ich noch mal hoch. Let's go. Okay, das ist schon besser, ja. Did you think we were going to go forward down the spooky corridor? No. It's time once again to go back up in the elevator. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? The suspense is killing me. <lacht> Yo, was wird denn hier um die Ecke sein? <lacht> Als ob. Wie erwartet das Büro vom Boss? <lacht> so oh my Musik. God. It's the boss's office. <lacht> this absolutely changes everything for me. Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. Oh. Guck mal, das ist der Vogel aus dem Hauptmenü der letzten Folge. Please hold. <lacht> Wusste gar nicht, dass es hier noch mehr so Einspieler gibt. Okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this stunning revelation and to move forward with... No! No, wait! No! I need more time to process. <lacht> okay. Dann warten wir halt hier gemeinsam. Guck mal, da ist ein Zylinder auf der Vogel. Das ist der gelbe Zombie. Das ist mein Bruder scheinbar. Soll ich meine Kleidung auf gelb ändern? Nein. <lacht> Alright. I have fully come to terms with it. I have made space in my worldview for this astonishing new reality. As before, I turn to your expert eye for gripping narrative, Master Stanley. Danke, danke. Als nächstes wird Stanley den Fahrstuhl wieder runterfahren. Of course. Going back down in the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? I mean, sure, now it's obvious, but you have to understand that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing had never been attempted before. I had no frame of reference to even anticipate it. 
that's just how revelatory Stanley's decision-making is, a breath of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. Ja, eben. Deine Geschichten sind halt alle langweilig. Das ist das Spannendste, was wir je gemacht haben. Hoch mit uns. Hmm. You know what? Ist ein bisschen schneller. I've just thought of something. Hold on, let's stop for a moment. Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. But the suspense, the agony of waiting and anticipating and having to guess, that's the real thrill. Oh, I simply don't want to let that feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice and slow? Jawohl, Zeitlupe Elevator. There we go. Isn't this so much more exciting, you know, Stanley? It seems like nowadays the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want big, explosive moments flung right in their faces from the very moment that things get started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience to build a slow and nuanced appreciation for the story, the characters? Why aren't we given time to imagine the surprises? To have to think and to anticipate and then to marvel at the eventual reveal. This is storytelling, Stanley. What you and I are doing right now. This is the most exciting narrative to be developed in years. And it's really all because of you. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations over and over. Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and not pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time and we all know it, which is why we're so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital and alive. That's why people like you so much, Stanley. Because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. You're a role model, you know? People look up to you, mm -hmm. which is why... Oh, I didn't know when to spring this on you, but, well, I've gathered a little press conference for you. Yeah. So that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Yes, I know you're not much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. Das bin ich, ich bin der größte Stanley-Fan. Geht weg. Oh, oh endlich eine Pressekonferenz okay. mit Stanley. Holding the press conference should be just around the corner here somewhere. Ah ja, also gibt's das Set schon mal. Okay, ja. Auch ohne Eimer. Ah, yes, here it is, just through this door. War es beim letzten Mal auch so? Ja, ich glaube. Doch, doch. Ja, genau. Two stage, right. welcome Stanley. Ready? I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't worry. You'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Okay, it looks like they're ready for you. Go get them. Okay, warte, aber ich will hier kurz erstmal gucken, was wir hier stehen haben. Ähm, genau, das kennen wir. Break a leg, champ, your boss, Stanley, my true love for you grows every day. You make me feel alive. Your wife. From the apartment ending. <lacht> okay, ich weiß nicht. Okay. Dann geben wir mal unsere große Rede. Gucken wir diesmal auch nach hinten. Jo, hier sind ja richtig viele. Jo, bist ein bisschen geblendet. Ganz ruhig, meine Fans, ganz ruhig. Down and up. So ist es jeden Tag, wenn ich auf die Straße gehe. <lacht> Stanley, ich kann dich verstehen. Okay. Das Ending war nochmal nice. Und der sehr starke Sarkasmus hat mir gefallen. So. Jetzt müssen wir mit dem Eimer äh, zum Adventure-Line-Ending gehen. Stanley wants to be a better man and a better co-worker. In time, perhaps, he would become both of those things. Dafür müssen wir rechts gehen und dann links in den Wartungsraum und den Fahrstuhl runterfahren. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his... This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, 
telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. Okay, cool, dass hier auch der Dialog no, anders ist. Never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meet. And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. Nö, runter hier. So, ab hier soll es ein neu wieder. Let's go. Dann gucken wir mal. Oh, good Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. <lacht> <lacht> Yo, mein Broom Closet, das Baby. Wie kriege ich das Vive Ending? Weil ich kenne alles außer. Warte mal. Okay, das war alles cool, aber ich glaube, das war schon ein Spoiler. Warte. All of his coworkers were gone. What could it mean? Ich habe bisher noch nicht mit dem. Ich bin. Ich zeige euch wo. Ich habe einen Weg noch nicht gegangen, nämlich. Und das machen wir jetzt erst. Wir sind hier nie gerade hochgefahren. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Tatsache, das haben wir noch nicht gemacht. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. Ja, bitte. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. Wen? She's been waiting. Wer? Wo? Hallo? <lacht> Telefon. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. Aber sie If ruft doch gerade an. If you truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Was, wenn ich's nicht mache? Kann ich... As Stanley picked ja. up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. <laughs> no, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. Oh, oh. Er hat uns. <laughs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Oh, Please ja, bitte. observe this helpful instructional Let's video. Let's go. <laughs> Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. Mm -hmm. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice. He could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people. Or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness. Is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Practice. Excellent. 
Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Thank you, sir. Ah, welcome oh my back. God. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Einfach alles komplett kaputt gemacht. Okay, ja, ich habe ja keine Wahl. Mhm. Nice, nice. Kann ich da irgendwie rein? Sind die Fenster auch fake? Nee. Oh, er hat ein Geländer angebracht. Das ist ja nett. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Was mal hier? Oh, kann ich hier vielleicht irgendwie runterfallen? Boah, wenn ich jetzt hier eine Möglichkeit finde, halt runterzufallen, muss ich gleich nochmal alles von vorne machen. Weil ich habe hier fünf verschiedene Wege in eine Richtung gefunden. Was geht hier ab? Werde ich einfach wieder in mein Büro geschickt oder... Was für Entscheidungen habe ich noch zu treffen? Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again and you'll be home free in the real world. Oh, endlich wieder nach Hause. So. Hallo. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Boah, ich habe gar keinen Bock, das Lehrvideo nochmal anzugucken, aber gehen wir einfach rechts. Das sind ja Rebellen. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Oh Gottes Willen, alles geht kaputt. Äh. Okay, ja, wie gehen wir jetzt hier lang? Ist noch nicht zu spät, ganz sicher. Guck, alles, alles wie immer. Der Meetingraum soll so sein. Oh, it's ruined. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story. You've destroyed my work. Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. <laughs> And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do oh, I do? Sprünge, ne? No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Okay. Funktioniert auch gut. Sehr düster gerade. Wir haben gewonnen! Hallo? Was zur Hölle? Oh, I'm, I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Ja. Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. 
<laughs> that thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to make... Oh, ich hätte es fast geschafft, da hochzuklettern. ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. Wow. <laughs> That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Ich muss ja, ne? <laughs> no! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. <lacht> Ihr resettet jetzt einfach. Exactly as Stanley would. Okay, es hat sich jedes Mal resettet, wenn ich rechts rein würde. Also gehen wir mal links. Darf er scheinbar nicht in die andere Richtung. So, jetzt muss ja alles ganz sein, ne? Ja, guck mal. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Okay, ja, ich folg mal und schau mal, was anders ist. Der ist zu. Das ist schon mal anders. Der Weg nach unten ist weg. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Der hat mir einfach alle Optionen weggenommen, der Junge. <lacht> ist das Badezimmer auch zu? Ja, alle Türen nur noch zu. Ah, die Tür kann ich öffnen. Oh, jetzt hat er sie zugemacht. Jo, das Office ist grün. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew Als ob wir jetzt einfach Stanley reden hören. Drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Night Shark 115. Hallo, ich bin Stanley. Sorry, ich kann nicht reden. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver, right there on the wall. Night Shark 115. 115. Ja, ich glaube nicht, dass Stanley I'm reden sorry, kann. Is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Ich kann nicht reden. <lacht> okay, fine, you're not gonna do it, but you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You... Okay. When Stanley came to a set of huh? two open doors, wait, wait. he entered the door on his left. Stanley! Stanley? Stanley? Hello? Are you... Ich bin... Is everything okay? <lacht> Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you <lacht> listening end. to me? Can you hear me? Is Yo, wir haben echt die right? Credits gefunden. Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. Das ist der William, mit It dem ich getweetet habe. Jawohl. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Er stellt mit Unity. Do something. Anything. Basierend auf der Arbeit von Stanley this Parable 3, 2013. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? 
Are you there? Are you listening to this, Danny? Are you there? <laughs> okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. Oh. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Ich fände so ein Spiel, wenn das Spiel noch mal so zehn Stufen krasser. Irgendwann gibt's sowas bestimmt mal als Spiel, wo das Spiel so alles, was du machst, versteht. Und nicht so richtig outcalled. Das wäre noch mal cooler. Irgendwann bestimmt. Jetzt haben wir nur einen traurigen Entwickler und wir hängen über Stanley. Ah. Ja, jetzt gehen wir noch ans Telefon, ne? Würde ich sagen. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? So. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Hallo, guten Tag, wer ist da dran? Ich bin Stanley. Meine Wohnung. Wohnung 427. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Get your day. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? <laughs> They'd want to commit their life to you. I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Sorry, but you're in my story now. Okay, okay, okay. <lacht> ich dachte schon, ich durfte mich gerade die ganze Zeit nicht bewegen, während die geredet hat. Meine Frau. Aber okay. Yo, nice Wohnung. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Hallo? Guten Morgen, Mitarbeiter 427. Drücke Z auf deiner Tastatur. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him. And every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Drücke Q. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to oh, do. Sich in mein Büro. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. Drücke C. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Z, um fernzusehen. Okay. And so he began to fantasize about ah, ja. his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Drücke B, um Zeit mit den Jungs zu verbringen. So, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Ein bisschen zu meta hier. Abendessen. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Yo, OG story. Drücke Q, um deinen Kindern eine Geschichte zu erzählen. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again. And again. Over and over. Wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Drücke C, um deiner Frau zu sagen, dass du sie liebst. But there is no answer. Oh. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. 
nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Drücke I, um morgens zur Arbeit zu erscheinen. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? Bitte drücke Q, um nichts zu hinterfragen. Ich drücke mal nicht. Aber wahrscheinlich passiert gar nichts. Ja, hier passiert nichts. Okay, dann drücken wir halt Q. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose. The same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. Or I died. <laughs> Bitte stirb, hat die Aufgabe gesagt. Scheinbar hat Stanley das sehr gut durchgesetzt. Das war doch mal ein positives Ending. Aber Leute, dann werde ich das mit dem Eimer, was wir hier in der Folge angefangen haben, beim nächsten Mal machen, würde ich sagen. Und dann müssen wir uns das alles, was wir jetzt heute angeguckt haben, eigentlich auch noch mit dem Eimer angucken, weil es ja auch noch mal anders passiert. Meine Güte. Das Spiel hat schon Content. Dafür, dass man immer wieder hier losläuft. Ich mochte als Kind auch unglaublich gerne diese Bücher, wo man... Kennt ihr bestimmt solche Bücher, wo man auch die ganze Zeit Entscheidungen treffen muss, wo dann stand, stand ja, wenn du das machst, bitte auf Seite 50, wenn du das machst, bitte, bitte auf Seite 74. Und irgendwann wusste man, dass Seite 74 heißt, dass man stirbt. <lacht> ah, die Bücher mochte ich als Kind schon sehr gerne und das Spiel ist einfach eigentlich ja eine Version von diesen Büchern. Man trifft Entscheidungen und alles verändert sich einfach. Sehr absurd und ich bin gespannt... Äh, wenn wir beim nächsten Mal nochmal diesen Memory-Raum da angucken, wo wir drin waren. Wo wir halt den Eimer, unsere Frau und so weiter gesehen haben. Ja, ich wollte ja das erstmal machen, weil wir brauchen, müssen ja unsere Frau erstmal kennen für Kontext, ne? Ja, jetzt haben wir das Vive-Ending gesehen. Auch wenn es sehr dark war, mal wieder. Gehen wir zurück zum Menü. Und spielen beim nächsten Mal das Deadly Parable 7. Und gucken dann, was das für einen Namen hat. Es, noch, es hat noch jemand gesagt, dass wenn man noch öfter neu startet, dass noch was Cooleres hier passiert. Einmalig oder so im Spiel. Äh, da kommen wir bestimmt auch noch hin. Aber gut, dann sehen wir uns beim nächsten Mal wieder bei einer weiteren Folge Stanley Parable. Ich hoffe, ihr hattet Spaß beim Zusehen. Bin gespannt, was wir noch alles kriegen. Und ja, bis dann. Euer Zimbelmann.